everyone. We're going to talk about business meetings today. What is a business meeting? A business meeting is a gathering of two or more people to discuss ideas, goals, and objectives that concern the workplace. Business meetings can be conducted in person at an office or a different location, or even over the phone and by video conference. Meetings take place with employees, managers, executives, clients, prospects, suppliers, and partners, and anyone else related to the organization. And you need to remember that uh, all those group communication that you need to do, whether it's it's with your team that's reporting to you or uh, with the senior management, meeting is a great tool to have a group communication done. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna focus on what are the different types, how many different types of uh, business meetings you might encounter in your day-to-day job, and uh, let let's see how you can make those meetings more productive. Before we go there, let me just also you know tell you guys that your business meeting primarily might be you know either a face-to-face meeting or a virtual meeting. Now we are all living in this COVID-19 era and all those face-to-face meetings are <laughs> a, a rare species right now. So, you know, most of the meetings or maybe 100% of the meetings right now that's happening are virtual meetings. Now face-to-face meeting has its own uh, advantages. Uh, like, you, you know, you can have a face-to-face interaction going on. Uh, you can build a lot of trust, you can build a lot of engagement because you are there in person. Uh, there's a different vibe, right, when you're when you're there in person. You can see who is doing what, who is engaged uh, in the meeting, who is not. Um, there, there is a lot more uh, engagement going on when it comes to a face-to-face meeting. That's why people prefer a, a face-to-face meeting. However, uh, virtual meetings although um, has those disadvantages that you know you cannot uh, see the people uh, see the employees in person uh, although if you do a video conferencing that that particular uh, issue can be dealt with however not 100 percent you know you still cannot build trust you you still cannot cannot get that vibe when you are physically there and you're interacting, you can see people smiling, eye contacts going on. Those things will not happen in a virtual meeting, even if it's a, it's a you know video conferencing that's going on. So that's the dis- disadvantage uh, on uh, of virtual meeting uh, compared to face to face that it lacks a bit on trust building and engagement. However, virtual meeting also has a lot of advantages over face to face meeting. Advantages includes in terms of cost. Uh, if you're doing a face-to-face meeting, you have to book conference room. There's a you know, cost of the room booking, electricity. Um, you know, if you're using any, any tools or device uh, like projector or something, there, you can be using paper and pen, stationery. So th- there can be a lot of cost involved. Plus, if you are doing a, a face-to-face meeting um, off-site, uh, then you might have to travel. So it might in, in, uh, involve a traveling cost. So, but but for virtual meeting, uh, you can save a huge amount of cost when you're doing a virtual meeting. So, normally, I, you know, personally, I would recommend a a, a, a balance of these two, uh, face-to-face and virtual. I like I like I like face-to-face meeting more than virtual, uh, frankly speaking. But then I cannot deny that virtual meeting also has a lot of advantages uh, than face-to-face meeting. But in reality, both these things exist, and I think both these things will exist. Of course, at this point in time, uh, the, the balance is heavy on the uh, virtual meeting end. But I'm, I'm pretty much sure once uh, you know, the COVID-19 uh, vaccination is out and everybody is uh, immune to that, I'm pretty much sure, although it, we might not get to the normal, uh, but at, at least something might be restored. Now let's look at what are the different types of meetings that you might encounter. So I have listed four different types of meeting that you might encounter in your day-to-day job. Number one is decision-making and collaborative meeting. Now, before I go there, I know I just forgot to mention that out of these four uh, different types of meeting, apart from the business review meeting, uh, when I talk about decision-making and collaborative meeting, or I talk about emergency meeting, or I talk about team meeting, uh, more or less, you might find these meetings happening with your peers or with your reportings. 
but when it comes to business review meeting that's the one uh, you know one type of meeting where you might be um, you know meeting with your senior management or clients or customer you know they might not be your report is there right so these are four different types of meeting let's just go and see in detail uh, what these types of meetings are all about and when you should do it and how you should do it right let's get started with decision making and collaborative meeting the objective of this meeting is to do some brainstorming and reach to uh, some decision or can be used for problem solving at times so if you are having some uh, critical issues or problem that you think will need uh, a lot of ideas to flow in and you might have to uh, you know, engage a lot of team members to to uh, reach to a solution then that's the perfect time to call in this meeting this type of meeting is not conducted very often but uh, is a must if you want to promote valuable intangible metrics like ownership and engagement so again there's no there's no um, uh, recurring uh, you know recurring type in this meeting so you might not have this meeting uh, very often in, in the entire year uh, only when you, you are facing some severe issues or problem uh, then you I mean then you call in this meeting so you know and and when people are engaged in this meeting when you're asking them about their ideas uh, what they think uh, you know we should do in this situation um, when people are you know talking about the ideas uh, you know everybody has their own ideas so they're uh, you know trying to let their level best that their ideas gets picked up by you or, or as a solution so they're arguing and brainstorming with each other um, and, and that's happening and maybe uh, you know after one or two meetings you might come to a, a solution however what's also happening at an unconscious level is they they are also engaging with each other so it, it, it promotes engagement and and the person whose idea gets picked up you know she will automatically have a, a lot, lot of ownership uh, displayed when it comes to the implementation of the idea so it automatically you know promote those uh, metrics like uh, ownership and engagement so it's a it's a great meeting to have for those things as well should be done as and when needed and should have 100 percent participation of team members uh, this is pretty important not every every meeting you might uh, ask for 100 percent participation or you might have but when you're when you're conducting this particular type of meeting you must insist uh, on having 100 percent of the team member to join this particular meeting because it does not happen daily or weekly or monthly or, or quarterly it does not have any uh, fixed pattern you're only calling up this meeting when you have a severe problem to address and you need people's help to help you with the ideas. So you need 100% participation because you need to hear ideas from every team member, right? Not, not, not one team member should be left out. So that's why it's important. Now, practically that might be challenging because uh, during the weekdays, you might be busy and your team members might be busy. So practically implementing this is very, very difficult but uh, you, you have to do it. So if in a particular week, uh, this particular uh, uh, you know, collaborative meeting cannot be done due to busy schedule, um, if you have the flexibility, if you have the time, try to schedule next week so that everybody can join in. And if, if still that is not being done, then uh, ask the team if they are comfortable uh, to have this meeting over weekend. Make them understand why you want 100% participation in this meeting. Yeah, why it is important for you because you value each and every idea that comes out from the team so that might make the uh, fee, uh, make the team feel uh, valued right and also ask the team whether they're okay to join you over weekend because weekdays are distracting and since the meeting is not a recurring one since the meeting uh, you know might happen maybe two or three times in a year so um, have the team members also uh, you know engaged in that kind of a discussion whether they want it to be done on weekend uh, and and just leave it up to the team whether the team wants to do it on a week or weekend but just you know throw the option on the table and also allow people to join over the phone uh, what you need basically is people's time and focus that's the most important thing you need in this particular meeting
Send the agenda well in advance in the invite so that people come prepared with their thoughts. Now, when it comes to a brainstorming meeting, when it comes to a collaborative style meeting where everybody is coming up with different ideas, chances are that you might not be able to reach to a decision uh, at the first go or in the first meeting. You might require a follow-up meet because people need uh, time to think, right? The, the creative ideas or the ideas to solve the problem uh, does not come immediately from our brain. Uh, yeah, it, 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 the brain needs time to uh, think and ponder over a particular problem and then when you are doing certain other activities then suddenly the, the idea starts coming in. So you might want to give the uh, team some time to think beforehand. Uh, so you know sending an in- invite in advance might help because people might come prepared with their uh, thoughts already. However, uh, have your expectation set that you might not see a decision being made in the, in the first meeting and you might have to have at least one or two more follow-up meets to uh, come to a decision. You need to encourage everyone to speak up and take a wise decision once everyone has mind. Once again, uh, trying to emphasize on this issue that uh, your job as a manager is first about them and you know, and, and then about you. So even if you already have an idea, don't speak up upfront. So the, the main intention is to allow people to speak first. Let their ideas start flowing, right? So even if you have a great idea, you know uh, what can be a possible solution. Don't speak up, right? Don't, don't just offer your solution right away. Um, Allow that brainstorming to happen. Allow the, uh, the team members to join in and, and have those discussion. And once everyone has opined, you might find one idea coming out of the team which is better than yours, right? So you might you might want to pick that up and totally not talk about what you thought uh, before the meeting. But if you think uh, after listening to everyone, your idea still is better or sounds better, then uh, you try to speak about that idea and let the team decide uh, you know, how they feel about it. Number six, allow conflicts to happen. Uh, allow brainstorming and do not tell what you think till then. So that's basically what we talked about here. If you can't arrive at a decision, schedule one more. So you need to have your expectation set that you might not be able to uh, achieve your mission uh, in just one meeting. So you might have to have at least two or three follow-up meetings to arrive at a discussion, especially if the problem is acute. You should consider everyone's decision wisely and finally decide at the very end. You need to be very careful of the decisions which are not considering, uh, uh, which are not considering proposed by other people, right? So at the end of the day, you might have to, you might, you might have to select one idea uh, out of the ten ideas coming in, right? It might be yours, it might be somebody else, but especially if it is somebody else' uh, idea, uh, and and you think that's great. Uh, just just picking that idea up uh, might make that particular person ex- extremely happy and ecstatic. However, um, it might be devaluing the other nine ideas that came from the rest of the team. So you have to be very, very uh, cautious that by picking one idea, you might be unintentionally hurting other people's uh, uh, sentiments and egos, right, or, or conf- confidence. So spend a lot, a lot of time, right? And this is very important. This and, and the reason I'm saying this is important because um, you know over 90% of the manager does not do it, right? They just they just announce the idea which they're going to pick it up and then let the team uh, you know uh, go implement it. But it's it's very very important that you spend time uh, after you select the idea to, uh, to explain the team why some of the decision could not be considered and appreciate the gestures made by other people, right? So that's a very, very important aspect. Point number nine, do do make a note. Point number 10, of course, that's that's, uh, that, you know, that's given for any meeting that please document whatever has been discussed. Document the decision as well on the email and send it across to everyone. So that's, that's generally what decision making and collaborative meeting is all about and uh, it would be entirely up to you when to schedule it but do remember 
do not overdo this meeting this should be done uh, you know sparingly and judiciously do not call in uh, people unnecessarily to solve uh, very small issues that does not require a special invite or a special meeting right a lot of the issues can be uh, solved by uh, you know you or your team members only through uh, one on one talks or through a team meeting right so only if the problem is uh, severe or acute then you consider doing this kind of meeting all right let's get into uh, type number 2 emergency meeting the objective of this meeting is either to address a high level escalation or an important update which cannot be delayed to be communicated or floated only over email right so that that's basically the basis of this meeting either you are you you got an escalation high level escalation coming from the senior management or coming from a customer directly um and and it's it's, it's regarding your team's performance or any particular member of the team um or it can be an important organization update which cannot be delayed or sent over email uh something like um, you know if the organization announces that there would be no bonus this year if you send that kind of information over email people might not take it well and people and that would be open to interpretation to so many people and and that might not be good for employee engagement and other employees as well so those kind of sensitive information uh, critical information should be given over emergency meeting call in everybody everyone and slowly uh, break the news and make them understand why it was done these kind of updates has to be done uh, or or given through emergency meeting uh, we need to try for maximum participation in the meeting just like the previous one uh, in the collaborative meeting this one also requires maximum participation because everyone in the team has to be covered because this is a very important thing that you're going to discuss so definitely 100% of the people in shift needs to be present Um, over and above if some key members are missing in shift uh, you should request them to join over the phone right so give them the option to uh, the decision on how many people you want to engage would entirely depend on you right but uh, try to make sure that you have close to 100 percent participation over here make sure post updating the team you ask each member by calling out names whether they understand what you have discussed because since this would be a very very critical update or uh, this might be a, a escalation that has come in a high level escalation that has come in you need to make sure that this does not get repeated so each and every member of the team regardless of whoever was responsible for this escalation however to make sure that in future nothing comes up um you know in a, in a similar path you need to make sure each and every person in the team understands what has been discussed and why the escalation came or or what's the update is all about so uh, the, the best way to do it is call people by their name uh instead of just asking guys did you understand and then people out, out of 10 or 20 people maybe five people say yeah we got it and then rest room in silence right so that that's not going that's not going to happen in this meeting and and you as a a coordinator and a host of the meeting must ensure that you get a buy in from everybody um by name that they have got it so if you are in a face to face meeting it's easy you, you can either call in name or you can literally see who are nodding heads and who are not but if you're it's a virtual meeting it's very difficult to understand the engagement level of employees so if you are in a virtual meeting and you want to get that acknowledgement it's it's a best practice to uh call in names of the people and say tom did you get it okay harry did you get it and 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 elizabeth did you get it or uh, neha did you get it right so you, you just go on and call people by name and and you know you get a buy in if this is arising out of an escalation you may use this call to understand the issues in detail and, and gather more information and then uh may discuss a way forward or an action plan to avoid this kind of situation uh going forward or to decide what can be done now do not use this meeting to corner any specific individual on on the call even if you know that you know he or she has to do with this escalation do not do not do a you know blaming and shaming act on the call as i told you if you remember during the uh, feedback training session that negative feedback it's one of the laws of feedback negative feedback or criticism should not be should not be done publicly or given publicly it has to be done privately 
all negative feedback should be given one on one separate post meeting send the update to the whole team over an email in the form of minutes of meeting so that that's given for any type of meeting do not forget to document the minutes of meeting and send it to everyone that's type number 2 uh, emergency meeting let's go into type number 3 team meeting that's one of my favorite the objective of this meeting is multiple however the goal is uh, maintaining quick touch point with the team on a daily basis put their fo- focus back on track for the day and remind them about um, our, our, our work life objectives right so it's it's a daily connect um, again some organization uh, stresses on a daily team meeting some organization stresses on a weekly team meeting however uh, even if your organization does not stress on a daily team meeting nobody stops you to have this right you, you as a manager you are in the driver seat on whether you want to have a daily meeting or not trust me uh, if you if you ask me daily meeting is a great stop uh, a great connecting forum to just have a, a touch point with your people not every day you might have a lot of things to discuss but having a touch point with people is very important uh, in terms of engagement and relationship and trust building yeah so have this meeting on a daily basis it it will definitely give you a great return on investment <laughs> i'm just talking on financial term but uh, jokes apart it will if it will be great for you in the long run so have this on a daily basis keep it really short because we are interacting daily and people are busy uh, in their day to day work uh, right now it's a uh, era of doing more with less people so people are super busy so keep it really short interesting uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes on an average uh, start on time uh, irrespective of who has joined or not this this meeting does not require 100% attendance because it's a it's a daily affair right not not daily you should have 100% people joining in so just focus on the people who are working uh, in the shift to to join in right and irrespective of whether you have five people working in the shift or six people or whether all of them has joined or not irrespective of that uh, start the meeting on time and close it on time uh, once the objective of the meeting has been reached so to start on time uh, it, it's 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 very very easy to understand that if you want to start the meeting on time you are the coordinator you are the host you are in the driver seat so you need to attempt joining the meeting uh, before the scheduled time um, especially if it is a virtual meet right when it's a virtual meet you might be trying to meet meet your team members over skype uh, or or zoom or circuit or microsoft team whatever tools you're using uh, you can always experience glitch uh, or you can experience delays or connectivity issues and if you're trying to connect to the meeting right on the time uh, start time um, you know there can be delays so since the objective is to start the meeting on time have it very short and crisp and end it on time try joining the meeting 5 minutes in advance that will give you a lot of time even if you have some technical issues to resolve them uh, maybe reboot your computer uh, resolve them and uh, join on time you can use this meet to provide a uh, status update of project or organization any uh, uh, particular thing to do for that particular day uh, connecting to people discuss any appreciation or good work done for that day call out people's name here as well in this meeting calling out people's name is important so call out people's name in the meeting ask how are they doing what are they doing uh, and working on today right it's 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 a, it's a connecting forum right it, it, it's not a it, it need not to be a very uh, serious and um, you know dark a uh, meeting environment all the time team meeting has to be fun uh, if you if you fail to generate that enthusiasm uh, among your team members to join uh, a team meeting uh, and that to happen daily then over time you might have less participants uh, from the team nobody wants to you know join a meeting daily which has the same objective right so keep it fun keep it interesting talk about different things uh, every day uh, there are so many things to discuss you can this you can just discuss about how people are doing uh, on a particular day right just don't talk about anything about business just talk about how they are doing you can you can talk about how what their hobby is uh, you know and on one fine day you can talk about uh, you know some important updates of the organization some other day you can talk about uh, an appreciation so just to mix and match make it fun and interesting uh, because 
you need to remember this is a daily affair so unless it is interesting unless people are looking forward to joining this meeting this will not be a success keep this meeting interesting all the time since a daily meet can be boring so people should look forward to joining this meeting that we already discussed avoid talking about escalation or criticizing the team on this meet do remember for escalation uh, we already have an emergency meeting right so don't waste time uh, you know talking about escalation in this meeting because chances are when you talk about escalation uh, you will not be able to complete the meeting in in short time right and this is not a forum don't don't make people think that um, you know uh, you know they they can get into uh, a long meeting if they join today uh, when you when you consistently uh, act on starting the meeting on time and ending the meeting on time when you consistently do that for months and months and year and year automatically the team will know that the team meeting is not the place uh, to discuss all these things right so team will have that trust and confidence on you and you will have good good uh, number of per- participants uh, every single day so avoid talking about escalations or even criticizing a team on this particular meeting and of course last but not the least document the mom in short and send it across to everyone since this is a daily or weekly meeting the mom also needs to be short often um, you, you can you can make it fun and entertaining <laughs> uh, need not to be a particular pattern Uh, but of course if your if your organization is following a particular uh, QMS uh, then you might have to look into your consult your uh, quality management team on whether they have a template right uh, if they don't have then you can you can uh, pretty much it's up to you how you want to document them and flow across all right that ends team meeting and let's now focus on the fourth and the final type of meeting that is business review meeting this is going to be interesting because this would be about how you are going to present your data uh, to your senior managers uh, or customers right so it, it's about reviewing reviewing your performance not you reviewing reviewing your team's performance so this is going to be different let's see what we have here The objective of this meeting is to represent your performance to your manager or customer uh, monthly, quarterly, as it may. It depends on your organization setup. It depends on your contract with the customer or client. What's the frequency of this meeting would be? This meeting normally will be recurring one. Uh, you should have one fixed agenda and points to cover. Uh, prepare the review deck well in advance uh, and get it reviewed for in. input so if if you are going to review this with a customer or a client it's it's always a good idea to get it reviewed by your manager whether um, you know he thinks uh, from you know from your boss or from your manager perspective uh, and he has more experience than you so whether he thinks everything is fine or you need to add or modify something in the, in the slides and if if this meeting is with your manager then you can check with some of your peers whether they have some uh, inputs to provide you be honest with performance and do not resort to any manipulations do remember that uh, manipulations can get you through one time two times three times or a few more times but eventually uh, if you are lying and manipulating uh, you know the client or the customer or your manager will, will eventually see through it and when he sees through it the entire credibility that you have been building up uh, through these reviews and through your performance can be washed away uh, in just one day so do not resort to any manipulation uh, go into the meeting if 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 you know that for this particular month or quarter you have not done well then uh, it it's a good idea and a better idea to accept uh, that you have not done well and work on uh, some action items to uh, better your performance do not use red color in the entire slides where you are meeting your numbers if you are meeting your numbers do not use red color red is uh, like whenever we see red uh, you know a lot of pictures comes into the head we we see red we, we think about the traffic light which is red which means stop right red means danger red means blood so red uh, whenever we see a uh, red color we kind of uh, stop and try to focus on that what's what's that data what's that picture which showing in red um, and especially when senior management is looking at a particular data uh, they are looking for greens and reds 
right? That's how they are uh, trained to look at uh, information. So whenever you they see red, they might uh, you know stop and look at it and ask unnecessary questions, which might land land you into trouble. So if you're not doing well in a particular metric or you know or, or somewhere. Uh, then you can use the red color is fine and you have to take in those questions and answer those uh, difficult questions but if, if 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 that's not the case do not use the color red in your presentation always send uh, the minutes of meeting post the meeting along with the deck to all the participants document the action plan on that mom and follow up Oops. yeah that's that's given do remember that since this is a review of uh, yours, right? Um, you need to put in a lot of uh, effort and focus to make sure that the action plan gets implemented on time because you will have to again present your performance next time to the same participants. With this, we come to the end. Uh, I hope you liked the entire training session and you, I, I hope you definitely like this part of the video. And so let's keep learning, let's keep gaining knowledge and we have to show a lot, we have to learn a lot. So just stay tuned with me. Bye-bye.